Hi, I'm Ricky Robertson, author and educator. I work with schools in developing social, emotional, and behavioral supports for students, especially those impacted by adverse childhood experiences and trauma. In this session, we're going to be discussing the critical role that education support professionals and specialized instructional support personnel play in supporting students' well-being and resilience. I actually started my career in education as a paraprofessional working with students with moderate to severe disabilities. It was one of the most difficult, challenging, and enriching jobs that I've ever had as an educator. It was one where I learned an incredible amount of skills that went on to benefit me as a classroom teacher and behavioral intervention specialist. I almost had to learn a new language in order to figure out how to communicate with every student that I served, maybe because they had challenges with communication or they displayed behaviors that were sometimes confusing or challenging for other staff to understand. And so I had to find ways to meet the moment-to-moment -moment needs of my students to support their well-being and success each day. Now, that's incredibly hard work, and so I want to begin by expressing my gratitude to other paraprofessionals and support personnel in our schools, because you do incredible work. At the same time, I also encountered challenges as a paraprofessional, because there were times where I knew my students better than anyone else in the building, and yet I wasn't consulted when it came to creating intervention and support plans for them. And so that equity of voice is important. We all deserve to feel respected in our workplace. Support professionals deserve that respect in part because of the impact you make in the lives of the students that you serve. And when I say support professionals, I'm broadly referring to folks who work in transportation, food services, nurses, paraprofessionals, and other professionals who provide critical support to the students, educators, and families that we serve in our schools. Now, the work that we do is necessary and also challenging, and I want to take some time to specifically talk about ways that we can best support students, especially those impacted by adverse childhood experiences and trauma. One suggestion that I'd like to offer you is that we know that supportive relationships are a critical protective factor to support young people's resilience. In fact, there's been research that's been done to try to figure out how come you can have children from the same community, even the same family, who can experience significant challenges and forms of adversity. And one child can go on not just to survive but thrive, and another child can go on to just be stuck in cycles of trauma and re-traumatization, just barely getting by. Now, obviously, there are many factors that impact a young person's development. But in the research conducted by the Harvard Center for the Developing Child, they found that one of the most critical ingredients for resilience, for helping a young person not just to survive but to thrive, was the presence of a supportive, protective relationship when that young person was growing up. So when young people were able to experience those difficulties and those traumatic events, they had supportive relationships that helped that toxic stress to become a little bit more tolerable so that they could grow stronger and ultimately persevere and overcome. Now, the incredible news is that those positive supportive relationships include relationships with education professionals, with people in that child's school. In fact, as a teacher, I worked in a building where the custodian had some of the strongest relationships with the students in the building. The time he took to say hello or to greet them or to check in with them, he built trust, he built relationships, and I have no doubt that he positively impacted the lives of thousands of students over the course of his career and contributed to their well-being and resilience. Each and every one of us has the opportunity to be that person or to be that relationship in a young person's life. And the good news is that research also shows we can build a connection and even a relationship with a student in milliseconds. So by smiling, greeting them, knowing them by name, maybe when they're going through the cafeteria line or they're getting on to the bus, or if we're a paraprofessional, we might even have time to really invest in and get to know our students at deeper levels. But just those bite-sized moments of connection are so impactful and so valuable. So one of the first things I want to encourage you to do is to really think about where are those opportunities for connection with students over the course of my day? And how can I show up for them, even in simple and small ways, that help them to feel seen and valued? 
Another thing I want to invite you to keep in mind is that many young people who've experienced adverse childhood experiences and trauma struggle with regulation. Their brain struggles to manage impulses, to manage emotions, and sometimes they can display behaviors that are challenging or even unsafe. And one of the most important things we can do in those moments when a young person is dysregulated is to find a way for to stay calm and present and assertive. Because if we can stay calm in those difficult moments, we're far more effective at responding to the needs of that young person. And research shows we can actually help their brains to co-regulate or start to integrate the parts of their brain that help them to reason and make better choices when we're able to respond in ways that are calm and present and assertive. So think about what are some of those challenging behaviors that really get under your skin or push your buttons? And when they occur, what are your strategies for staying calm and present in that moment? So maybe it's taking deep breaths. Maybe it's positive self-talk. Maybe it's pausing and reminding yourself in that moment, I am the adult. When we're able to self-regulate, we're better able to support our students in co-regulating. We're more effective at responding to their needs. And lastly, I want to encourage you to think about the environment that you work in with students, whether it's a cafeteria, a bus, a clinic, a resource room, whatever that might be, and think about how that environment is structured and organized. So for example, I was recently in a school in a cafeteria that was crowded with students and all of the tables were very close to one another. And there weren't a lot of clear routines for students to enter into the cafeteria, where to line up, where to, how to exit the cafeteria appropriately. And so it just kind of felt like chaos. So one of the first things we did is we just focused on organizing that space, spacing the tables out more, thinking about the seating assignments differently, and having more structured routines for how students were going to navigate that space. And as a result of creating a space that was more welcoming and structured and organized, it helped to actually improve the behaviors that the students were displaying. So whether you work on a playground, a bus, a cafeteria, whatever that space might be, I want to invite you to reflect on that space and think about, is it organized? Is it accessible and welcoming? Does it feel like a calming and peaceful space? And are there any simple things we can do to create a space that's more conducive and more inviting of positive behaviors from the students? So in conclusion, we can focus on building relationships with students, even in simple ways on finding ways to self-regulate, to be able to stay calm, present, and assertive, especially in moments of challenge. And lastly, to create welcoming, structured spaces to work with the students that we support. And when we do these things, we start to create a sense of safety and belonging for our students that supports their well-being and their resilience. Thank you for the work that you do. The Trauma-Informed Teaching Series is made possible by a partnership between the National Education Association and WETA. For more information, please visit adlib.org trauma.